All right, we might make a start, folks. Um, welcome. My name's George Galev. I'm one of the members of the Tarnagala Alternative Energy Group. And we're launching our Resilience Action Plan today, which is really exciting. It's been a, a two-year process. So, um, yeah, it's great to finally get there and um, yeah, present something that we're very proud of. Um, just a few housekeeping things that we've got here. Um, the, the top right corner of your screen, if you move your mouse, you'll see a view um, section. To click on that, just set it to speaker. It'll make it a lot easier for you rather than having a, a gallery view. And um, we, there's a chat uh, icon at the bottom as well. So if you click on that, it'll open up a chat on the right hand side of your screen and you can post comments or questions and if time permits, we'll um, get to those at the end of the, the session as well. Uh, I will also put in our website. Uh, so you can go there and actually download our resilience action plan when you uh yeah when we're finished today so that's actually live on the web at the moment uh so yeah firstly i'd like to acknowledge that we're on jajawa run country here in tarnagala and i pay my respects to elders past present and emerging and also i pay my respects to elders in the regions and areas where you reside uh i'd like to acknowledge uh some special guests that we've got here today as well um, Jeffrey Kane and Aaron Baxter from DELP, thank you very much for all your support. Uh, the Mayor of the Loddon Shire, Councillor Cheryl McKinnon, thank you for joining us. Uh, the CEO of Loddon Shire, Phil Pinion, uh, good to see you here. And uh, Member for Riffin, Louise Daly, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'll just uh, introduce our uh, project leadership group to you just briefly. So we have Linda Jungworth, who's the president of the Tarnagala Alternative Energy Group. Linda moved to Tarnagala about three years ago and has been an active member in, of the community. She's a recipient of a Rivers and Ranges Community Leadership Alumni Achievement Award and will be standing for a council position in Tarnagala Ward this year. We also have Paul Davis, who is our secretary and he currently works as the postmaster in Tarnagala. Previously, Paul held a senior role at the State Coordination Centre as liaison officer between state and federal government during the Black Saturday fires in 2009 and coordinated the National Assistance uh, Program for Victoria. So we're pretty lucky to have Paul living in our town as well. Uh, Kelly Whitten, who is the treasurer. Uh, Kelly owns a local business called the Tarnagala Supply Store, and she um, services the town with uh, and the surrounding area as well with fresh local produce. So it's um, just a recent addition to the town, which is great. Uh, myself, I'm George Falev. I'm the, the local CFA captain. And we have uh, Lee Mel Melberg, who is the principal of the local primary school and uh, community members, Carmen Skull and Barry Kondik, AFSM JP, who have also been part of the uh, organising group, uh, the project leadership group while we've been going through. Uh, okay, um, so this will only go for about oh, 40 minutes all up. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just keep rolling. I'd like to ask uh, Jeffrey Kane, who is the manager of sustainability sustainability program for DELP to just give us a few words if that's okay. Thank you very much Jeffrey. Yeah no, thank you and uh, yeah thank you for inviting me to share some words with you all today not just as I guess as a representative of DELP but someone who's been on this journey I guess from the very beginning and Linda correct me if I'm wrong but I believe the origins of all this started back at the uh, virtual center of climate change innovation marketplace all the way back in 2017 um, at the time, I don't think you knew uh, what would be done and what the idea um, that brought the project that we see now together um, would actually be. But uh, well, you knew you had to do something. And I guess with that grit and determination that you had back then, you made those connections with RMIT, 
connecting with uh, Friends of the Earth, I see Lee's on the line now, um, establishing and bringing together some great uh, and amazing residents in, in the community together to, um, to establish the uh, Tarnagala Alternative Energy Group. And, you know, all that ultimately led to being successful and, and being awarded a, a grant from the, the Vicky program back in 2018. So just reflecting on that, that's a, such a huge achievement um, to do. And to give you an idea of the level of achievement, um, that was a very competitive process. Only uh, three projects within our region, you know, going from Gisborne all the way up to Mildura got funded. Um, but that's just some great work on your behalf and the, and the leadership group um, pull that project together. But it's also a reflection of the department's commitment and interest in supporting communities around um, resilience. So for those that don't know what um, Vicky, so the Virtual Centre for Climate Change Innovation is, so DELP administers that program and is really created to foster approaches and collaborations um, within communities and businesses to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, uh, but also adapt to climate change. And a big part of that was really just providing an opportunity to have a go and see what would work on the ground and what wouldn't. Um, but I'm sure for all those that were involved in this particular project, um, that's no easy feat by all means in any stretch of the imagination. There's a, there's a lot happening um, to make this work. And doing a community resilience plan is complicated at the best of times, um, uh, but it's never been more challenging and I guess more necessary than now. There's so many significant transformations um, affecting communities at the moment with climate change being just one of those. Uh, so it's a, it's a really great privilege to see Linda and the rest of the um, Tainagala Alternative Energy Group, Kelly, George, Lee, Paul, Julie, Carmen and, and Barry really volunteering um, they're already busy lives to actually have a go and, and try this out and see how it'll work out. Um, and I know that a lot of the, the rest of the um, community of Tainagala also contributed um, in many different ways. So uh, really well done on that. And you sure will be very proud for what you've achieved. Um, and it's, and you know, it's, it's a, while we're kind of talking about a bit of a, a, a document today, um, it's, it's not just a, a document that talks about Tainagala's story of resilience. It, it really represents many doors opening now and opportunities to kind of create more partnerships, seek resources to make some change and, and obviously make a difference to, to the lives of the residents in, in Tainagala. So that's, that's really fantastic. And it's also a bit of a beacon because there's many towns and communities out there now um, looking to start their climate um, adaptation journey and, and building resilience for their communities. So, so now that you've started um, this work, there'll be a lot of communities in the region probably looking towards um, uh, Tanagala for some leadership. And, you know, it's a lot of pride to me for someone that works in this region um, to kind of see that leadership coming from a place like Tanagala. And I hope you share that sense of pride as well. Um, at this point, I also want to acknowledge RMIT's role in pulling this all together, particularly Mitchell's work. Um, it's not easy translating the theory of uh, resilience into something practical on the ground. And I know that you had a lot of hands-on work in doing that. So uh, thank you for that hard work. And I hopefully you also to learn from the residents at Antanagala as a whole, um, that you can translate to some of the, the other work that you're doing around uh, resilience. And I'll, I'll just finish by saying as a, as a public servant and someone working in climate change, it's, it's incredibly motivating and I guess, uh, relieving as well to see a community um, mobilize. The scale of action needed to adapt to climate change is beyond the responsibility of any one group or organization. Um, so it, it, it's really good to kind of um, be part of that and, and seeing some movement happening now because there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. And you've also added a bit of ammo into my toolkit as well for when I go talk to other communities I can if I'm getting any pushback, I can say, if Tarnagal is doing it, we can all do it. So there's no excuse now. So but that's really fantastic. And um, so thank you again for allowing me to just quickly speak now and, and share my reflections on the project. I really look forward to see what, what's going to happen next and, and being part of that journey. So yeah, the best of luck and I uh, look forward to working with you all in the future. Thanks very much. Uh, we've really enjoyed working with you too, so it's been it's been brilliant. Uh, Mittal Varanvati is our our project 
uh, leader, I guess, from, from RMIT. Mitchell, Mitchell is a lecturer at RMIT University Sustainability and Urban Planning. Her research focuses on a long-term impact of housing reconstruction projects, the theory and practice of socio-ecological systems, resilience, and community-led approaches. Her field of research cites at the intersection of built environment and design and human geography. So uh, yeah, we'll just uh, listen to Mitchell now, thank you. Thanks, Erin, for setting the tone for this um, uh, uh, celebration today. And uh, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners uh, of the land on which uh, we all stand, work, and live. Um, uh, I'd like to thank Karen Bosomworth, who is also present here. She is, has been my mentor and advisor for this whole entire project, and without her um, recommending me to work on this project, I wouldn't be here. So thank you all. Um, do you mind sharing the screen? Um, the... Yep, not a worry. We'll do right now. So what I'm, the purpose of me presenting is to just give you quick snippets of the hard work that the whole Tanagala community has put together um, over the last two years. And you will see more of that in, in the report. This is just a very quick snippet. And um, uh, I want to also highlight, uh, apart from the process and journey they have gone through, uh, what is it that we all recommend for future now. So um, this is uh, the journey we took together is about co-production of uh, resilience action plan. And uh, I'll just sorry, I'll just go to the start. Yeah, sure. I'll put my timer <laughs> <Okay>. on. <laughs> yeah. So um, this is Tanagala as uh, the next slide. Uh, thank you. This is Tanagala, and uh, like many other regional towns, uh, almost eight thousand five hundred towns across uh, Australia. This is uh, one of the towns which is facing similar uh, challenges, like. Uh, a declining population, infrastructure, as well as economy. Next slide, George, thank you. And some people in Tanagala, as you, uh, Jeff has al already mentioned and George has um, uh, introduced, uh, they decided to do something about it. And they also have a busy life, believe it or not. And uh, they still decided to volunteer a lot of their time and all age groups included, including the children in this photograph. Um, next line. Um, so the uh, Wiki, their grants uh, was designed to foster action for climate change adaptation, uh, innovative action as well and collaboration. So in spirit of that, we thought uh, co-production is the best approach. Uh, next slide, George. Thank you. So co-production, there are many definitions, but that is uh, an approach we all used to have before the state used to exist. Um, but this is one of the uh, thing, one of the principles proposed by a group of authors saying that the process needs to be context specific, needs to have collaboration. So learning from different mindsets, uh, sectors, and need to be goal oriented. That wasn't a problem. We were focused on resilience, but we didn't know what everyone meant by that. And needs to be interactive. So uh, for it being interactive, uh, we were communicating in terms of infographics and visuals because uh, there were multi, uh, the average age group is 65 in Tanagala. Next slide, thanks. So uh, there was collaboration at multiple stages. And as you can see, the list of stakeholders who were involved from public policy, emergency management, and health sector, as well as community organizations. Um, the next slide. So the whole uh, project was divided into three phases. First phase being uh, establishing PLG. So they are part of the community 
and uh, have already a trust and relationship with the locals. And they became like a conduit or a link between all stakeholders and the community. Phase two was about strengths and challenges and phase three was matching those to come up with actions. Um, the PLG was established and as you can see, uh, we used to gather before COVID uh, and if not um, at least once a month, if not more, uh, principles of how uh, this project would be guided were uh, developed. The most important one is keep it fun and simple. Keep the jargon out, which I will, I'll remember uh, dearly. Uh, next slide, thank you. Um, resilience was defined collaboratively. Again, uh, it, the definition ranged. For some, it was about energy self-reliance, uh, going to renewable energy. But holistically, when it was defined, uh, it became clear that the whole town was interested in um, resilience during good times as well as bad times and resilience of all capital forms. Um, so this vision has now become their vision statement, the town's vision statement. Next slide. Um, strengths were identified as per each capital forms and as you can see the economic capital was really low um, and nature was kind of surviving after three years of drought but everyone felt that it needed a bit more support. Next slide. And challenges are kind of uh, rooted in, um, in, in de development and can be seen in demographics, uh, a demographic trend with declining population. And as per the Australian Bureau of Statistics, uh, this is also rated in a lower socioeconomic uh, disadvantage area. Next slide. So as I was saying, we present information through infographics and visuals. You can see on the left side, all the physical capital that uh, people are proud of. Uh, and on the right map, the houses and buildings that are vacant or just holiday homes and uh, businesses that have closed over time. Next slide, thank you. So challenges were also identified in form of climate change and uh, the uncertainties that come from the extreme events and hazards which we cannot predict. And uh, four key uh, extreme events were identified which would impact the town. And this is the risk cluster. Next slide. Based on those, um, we combined the scientific data and people's lived experience to come up with these three scenarios. Uh, two were positive and the third one was a desired one. Next slide, thank you. And to match up the strengths and challenges as well as capacities, we adopted this approach of uh, three horizons where H1 is if we continue with business as usual, the town will decline. Uh, but H3, the blue one, is where people wish to be in future and the seeds of which are present in, in the present times, but we just need to identify it. So we did historic mapping from 1950s. And next slide, George. Um, and uh, to identify patterns and people themselves identified that there were periods of stability and there was period of downturn and why they felt there was a downturn. And now they feel there's a pattern of change. There is uh, something positive on the horizon. Next slide, thank you. So horizon one was all the uh, present day uh, challenges and horizon three is the future vision they have and how can they connect the two well, became sort of uh, some of the ideas that uh, community had. The seeds of horizon three were present in the present. As you can see, there are some rows which go all along all the three horizons, the blue. And based on these, uh, multiple actions were derived. Uh, next slide, thank you. And 
only five were uh, listed based on uh, democratic voting. And you can see children were also voting, elderly, everyone was voting. And uh, you'll see more about that in the video following. Next slide, thank you. One of the scenario was tested against these actions with a uh, lot of multiple stakeholders and um, it reaffirmed that the actions that were identified as top priority were actually going to be really helpful. Next slide, thank you. So um, the report was uh, endorsed, um, was presented to the community by the community, not by me. Uh, the PLG presented the whole report, draft report to the community. Um, it was uh, uh, attended by all age groups and multiple uh, gender types. Next slide, thank you. And what people have found is, uh, based on their reflection, is that this process of co-production has uh, built a stronger community, as well as, um, next slide, thank you has increased awareness about climate change and resilience. Next slide. Has increased skills uh, and a sense of optimism amongst PLG. Now they feel they can do confident public speaking, host workshops and do facilitation, which is yay, well done. Uh, next slide, thank you. Uh, there were also some unanticipated benefits uh, that there has been an opening of a new enterprise. They are, have started working with funding bodies and the government is also happy to work with them to um, implement actions because the government sees there is one voice of the whole town. There, there aren't multiple groups asking for different things. So moving forward, this is the recommendation. Next slide. And that is my last slide. Uh, next slide, George. Thank you. So in the process of adaptation, resilience action plan is the very first step. Now the community has uh, two pathways to transition towards uh, uh, transformation. And that is one is to uh, implement these actions collaboratively. They still need collaborations. They can't do it alone. So resilience should not equate to self-reliance. It needs to, it still needs a lot of collaboration. And second action is that just Tanagala in itself can, uh, can do only so much. They need to become change agents and work at a regional level um, to work collaboratively on building their adaptive capacities. So this is a call to all partners and stakeholders out there to continue to work with Tarnagala and help them in their journey towards adaptation. Next slide and thank you. Thank you, Miso. I've seen that um, uh, hopefully most people got to see those. There was one person who couldn't actually see the uh, presentation, unfortunately, but I will pass that on. But everything that Mittal talked about is in our actual uh, resilience actual resilience action plan. So uh, it's listed in there and you, and you can have a look at uh, much of the graphs, the information that were, was in that presentation. Um, okay, so now I would like to just share the video that we produce here in town. Um, some may have already seen it. Uh, but it's just something that gives you the the concept of what we've done and um, yeah, puts you in the picture. So without any further ado, hopefully this will work. <laughs> Can everyone see that? Tarnagala is a small town on Jar Jar Warung country in central Victoria. In the 1800s, gold was discovered here and upwards of 20,000 people flocked to the region with the hope of striking it rich. Today, the town's population has dwindled to only 133 residents with a median age of 61 years and is surrounded by box iron bark forests. 
We see the remnants of the glorious past in the infrastructure that remains, but a declining population, deteriorating buildings, low economic prospects and climate risks make the future look bleak. In Australia, up to 1,700 other small towns like Tarnagulla are experiencing similar effects. A group of locals forms to research a way to make our town more resilient to current and future challenges. In 2017, we were awarded a Climate Change Innovation Grant through DELP and the Victorian State Government. We employed the services of Dr Mittal Vahanvati from RMIT's Centre for Urban Research to help us create a resilience action plan for the town. The whole town was invited to add their voice through a series of workshops and events to look at the strengths and assets, challenges we may face, find solutions and actions through our active capacity as a small town. We decided on a five point plan through a citizen's jury. One, to facelift Tarnagulla. Two, to boost the economy. Three, to establish reliable sources of energy. Four, to strengthen our community spirit. And five, to improve access to health services and public transport. Our Resilience Action Plan has been produced and hard copies will be distributed to all residents in Tarnagulla. The Tarnagulla community of the future will be different and together we will work towards developing and sustaining a thriving town. We will have a strong social culture built on a diverse and connected population representing and welcoming peoples of all ages, status, ethnicities and interests. We will have a beautiful town with a sustainable economy built on local agriculture, businesses, clubs, organisations and tourism. To be resilient, we will have developed the necessary capabilities to confidently address our future. I hope that worked. <laughs> okay. Oh, good. Good. Um, yeah, that really brings us to the end of the, the presentation. I might just put up the slide uh, with the key stakeholders, just so that people have got that while we're talking. And yeah, and I'll just open up to messages and questions. We've got a few minutes uh, that we can uh, just take some messages and, and see what, yeah, see how we go. Hi, it's Bridget from VCOS here. Um, the Victorian Council of Social Service. How are you, everyone? This is just amazing. This is just so fantastic. Um, really grassroots, owned by the community, led by the community, expertly facilitated and, and directed by, by Mitchell and others. Um, I just think it's fantastic. Well done to everyone. Thank you. Feel free to jump in, anyone. Um, but thank you very much. We're getting a lot of um, great comments about the video and the project itself, which we really do appreciate. Hi, uh, George, my name's Jen, Genevieve, and I was there, um, I think, on the day that Mitchell came to town. And I'd just like to congratulate Tanagala. You've done a fantastic job. Um, I just wonder, I missed a little bit and I didn't see all the slides, so I just wonder now from here, the very first step 
um, you'll take and what level of resources or funding do you, do you envisage you need to keep going? And how do you plan to convince funders, given that there are 130 people, how will they see this as a good investment to support you? Probably too many questions. <laughs> um, it, it is quite a few questions, but that's okay. I, I think that things are already starting to move, Genevieve. There's uh, already, out of this project, there's been a project to look at a possible microgrid for our town and Donald. So they're doing a feasibility study to see if that will um, be feasible for us. And that's only come to fruition because of the interest in the project that we did. So um, that's something in the future that, that could happen, which would be great. And that would certainly facilitate our securing of our energy uh, reliability for our small town. We get quite a few blackouts here. Uh, in terms of the other key projects, it's, it's more about getting more community members on board for specific elements of those and just working on small items and then, then building on that. So uh, having this uh, plan is something that will help us get funding in future because it, it shows that we're capable of delivering something like this and we've got something that we're working towards. So, uh, yeah, it's still going to take a lot of work, but this is a great first step for us to uh, develop further and, and get those goals that we're, we're trying to aim for. I don't know if that answers everything, but uh, if anyone else wants to jump in, go for it. <laughs> I guess that third question was just how I'd, do you I'd like to add something. Yeah, go for it, Linda. I was just going to say the council have been doing some really great work around uh, community planning groups and are in the process of reorganising those a little. Unfortunately, COVID's made it very hard, but this plan will be available to a planning group that is set up specifically to um, communicate with the town of Tarnagulla and that would would be the perfect place for any planning to happen. And, and if they've got a copy of our report, they have all that clear information in front of them as they make those decisions. Can I also add something to it? Um, Genevieve, it's, that's the biggest challenge now, what you have asked, uh, the burnout of volunteers as well as uh, continuing the momentum of, um, of this project. Um, so what we planned together was to um, ask community who can lead each of these actions, where, what do they think, where their skills fit in. And um, in the report, you can see, uh, we haven't named anyone in there, but we, uh, we have sort of identified people who have volunteered themselves. So now it's going beyond PLG, the whole of town. Many people have said they will want to lead one of the action and they have a group of other people who are going to help them. So I think um, that that is great, but it just needs to, we need to wait and see what happens. But uh, the other recommendation we as a uh, Tanagala, I say V because I just feel part of Tanagala. <laughs> but uh, Tanagala and um, uh, we, uh, we together identified that uh, from, from newer projects, uh, DELP or any funding body should also uh, have reserved some amount of funding for the project leader, like Linda, who was uh, leading the project from the town, because there is only so much volunteering time voluntary time you can give uh, and to avoid burn burnout. So I think Erin has also uh, uh, said, yes, they also understand that is essential. So, yeah. Uh, ben from FECOS here as well. Um, I just had a question if um, any other communities have got in touch with you about establishing their own action plan and potentially learning from the great work that you've done as well. I might pass this on to Linda. Uh, we haven't had any inquiries from any other towns at this point, um, but we're hoping that what we have done will inspire other towns to realise that 
that it is possible to have a good look at your town and put some some really um, really good plans in place. Uh, I just saw a question there, sorry, from Genevieve. I think that having that plan there, um, we're actually providing evidence right from a very starting point that the projects that we want to put in place are likely to succeed. And I think that that will, um, will, will um, put us in good stead because we've already done the work behind the scenes to, to work out what it is that we need and what are the best actions for us to actually make a difference. So. Over to you, George. Yeah, I think, are there any more questions or should we leave it there and you can get in touch with us by going to the website, tarnagala.weebly.com or to Middle's website as well. And um, yeah, any further questions we can answer after this, but the, the main purpose of this meeting is to basically launch our plan and um, put it out there. Excuse me, George, Steve Cameron here. Hey Steve, good to see you. Thank you, sorry I'm a little bit late. I have been following here and I was just talking to Jamie McKenzie and uh, Jamie and I just wanted to mention how, uh, how happy we were to be invited to participate in the process and, and how good it was being involved with the local community. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. And I still remember the first day Linda rang talking to me about this idea. So um, certainly come a long way from there. And it's just been a really uh, a great process to have the whole community involved, but particularly having a research backing in a local community process like this is is such a strength and um, as Jamie and I spoke with the local community when we were developing and then going through the scenario as part of the part of your work that um, you know a lot of communities can come together in, in times of need to be able to plan this and do it really well with the backing of research and then bringing external partners in like you've done is exactly the way that this should be done. So well done to the everybody involved. And uh, Jamie and I just really wanted to acknowledge that we were so pleased to be involved and we were so well looked after and the community really did such a great job then and it looks like you're really on the way to, to doing more in the future. So well done. Thank you, Steve. Um, George, can I just say a couple of things? Hello. Yeah, sure. Hi, Karen. <laughs> Hi. Um, it's a pity we couldn't get back there. I was really looking forward to coming back to Tarnagala, but at some stage, I, it's such great, great work. Everyone should be really, really proud. And that question about convincing grant makers where you only have 130 compared to 1,000, what you'll be able to do is show the impact for just about every single person. That will be the power of what you do. So yeah, mm. put that in your grant applications would be my suggestion. <laughs> yeah. 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 So it's just awesome. It's so great to see. So congratulations. Thanks, Karen. Just before everyone leaves, may I ask we all unmute ourselves and give a big round of applause to PLG and Tarnagala community for such wonderful, big hearted effort and wouldn't have done it without uh, you guys putting in your heart and soul in this. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be in that. Thank you to everyone. <laughs> now we can open that bottle of champagne. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> and Definitely. you can get yourselves a copy of this. Um, yeah, I've, I've put it in the chat section of the, uh, the talk, but you can also download it off our website now. So um, yeah, have a look through it and yeah, stay safe. <laughs> I know you're probably <laughs> sick of hearing that. Um, and make sure you're okay on Are You Okay Day. <laughs> so many thank yous to everyone for making this possible. It's unbelievable that we're here and, and it's been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you for your time today too. Thank you. Thank you.